Busy, busy, busy is the phrase of the day. We'll be here to guide you along the way. Let's talk about just how many storms we're dealing with this week in the Tuesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Hello, it is the 1st of April 2025. I'm Texas Storm Chaser Spaldi and Chief David Reimer. No April Fool's jokes in this today. We have weather to talk about, so we're going to be serious. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know, but no, this is not an April Fool's joke. I do apologize for the somewhat late release of the video. I'll be honest, I'm packing. Uh, I am on the east coast of the United States, and I am going to be skedaddling back home this afternoon and early this evening, which is going to be a little interesting given the uh, possibility of maybe some isolated storms interrupting that process. But hopefully we're not having to do some sort of severe weather coverage from 36,000 feet because aircraft Wi-Fi isn't exactly the most reliable thing to deal with. So let's just go ahead and get into it. We are going to be busy this week. That doesn't mean we're going to be dealing with a bunch of tornadoes. That doesn't mean you're necessarily going to have softball-sized hail flying through your skylights. And it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, we're going to be busy every single moment of every single day. But we do have the potential to certainly have quite a bit of active weather for the first week of April. So we're just going to talk about it. We're going to tell you what we think is going to happen. And hopefully we do a better job than, well, I did yesterday when I said Monday was going to be quiet. And then we had tennis ball size hail in parts of Bear County in western San Antonio. Because really that was... Partly incredible in the fact that actually happened because that was about a 3% probability, but oops. Really, that was a big oops. That, that, that's on me. So let's get into it. We're going to start off like we did yesterday. This is the upper air chart at 500 millibars. This is about 18,500 feet above sea level. These are the winds. Uh, I'm just showing you this starting at about noon today through the week to show you the big old jet stream is going to be sitting its happy self over Texas starting, well, tonight through, honestly, Saturday at least, uh, leading to multiple upper level perturbations and storm systems moving overhead. We're going to have a pretty slow moving frontal boundary that's also going to be a focal point for thunderstorm development. We're also going to have a dry line. Uh, going into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I'm hoping we're done by Sunday. I think we're probably going to be done by Sunday. But the next five days, today included, you know, we got some issues to talk about. Uh, the good news is we need the rain, most of us. And folks who don't need the rain, the Rio Grande Valley, good news. Y'all aren't really going to get rain out of this. So that's good for y'all. Everyone else, we need the rain. Unfortunately, when it comes to rain in April, usually you have to deal with falling chunks of ice and the potential for spinny, spinny, doom, doom problems. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start with the severe weather outlooks. We're going to do this kind of like I did last week. We're going to go through each day's severe weather outlook. I'm going to be able to chapterize and categorize this video pretty easily that way. And uh, if you're watching this video live, you're not going to see that. But if you're watching after the fact, we're going to go in, add chapters. You'll be able to sift through things pretty easily and well, find what you're looking for. This is the severe weather outlook for today, tonight, into pre-dawn Wednesday. Now, this is going to be a conditional threat. I want to emphasize the fact there's a probably about a two-third chance. Let's just say a 60 to 70 percent chance we're not going to have storms south of the Red River this afternoon or early this evening. If we have storms south of the Red River this afternoon and evening, there is a pretty significant chance they are going to be dropping really big hail, like baseball, softball size, localized damaging wind gusts. And as you're probably unfortunately going to see by this evening north of the Red River in Oklahoma, if we have any individual supercell storms south of the Red River this evening, sunset through midnight, they're probably going to be trying to drop tornadoes. And the overall wind ingredients, the overall kinematics and thermodynamics are kind of like we saw with the Sanger Day last year, where we had, you know, tornadoes dropping at 10 p.m. at night. If we have a storm like that going tonight, south of the Red River in northwest Texas, Texoma, western north Texas, or the big country, uh, there's definitely the chance we could be dealing with some significant tornado problems. But that's maybe, that's assuming we have a storm at all at that point. And there's a 60 to 70 percent chance we're not going to have that. If confidence increases, we're going to have that. This outlook is going to go from level two to way up there real quick. So that is 
something we're going to have to watch for and why we have this conditional risk for a few severe storms late this afternoon through this evening. Now, going into overnight into pre-dawn Wednesday, we're expecting a line of storms to fire up along a southward east or a southeastward moving cool front that will be approaching DFW I-35 around sunrise tomorrow morning. Line of storms may fire up. Some of those storms could have hail and strong winds. We'll keep a very close eye on things going through the afternoon, and if things start to look a little more volatile, I will be sharing that information pretty darn quick. But as it looks now, we should have a lid on the atmosphere, a cap, that will hopefully prevent thunderstorm development through the afternoon and early evening south of the Red River. But that's not a guarantee. And again, if we have storms south of the Red River, they are going to be probably quite intense, significant, and the potential for all modes of severe weather, especially after sunset, 7, 8 p.m. onward, the tornado risk would increase significantly. All right, going into Wednesday. Well, rambam. Here's the severe weather outlook for Wednesday. Now, we could have some morning storms, but going into the afternoon hours, the possibility of scattered to several severe storms. Texoma, North Texas, the Arklatex, Northeast Texas. Tomorrow, low-level wind shear looks to be weaker than it is today, so the tornado threat tomorrow does look to be secondary compared to the more likely hazard of really big hail potential and strong damaging winds. Not completely confident. Again, we're going to have all that many storms here in Texas with the highest chance for scattered to several severe storms in Northeast Texas. Truthfully, we're just going to have to see how tonight evolves, and we'll get a better glance and a better idea of how tomorrow afternoon and evening is going to evolve, but we could have storms tomorrow night into Thursday morning, and some of those could have hail and strong winds, heavy rain, and yes, there may be a tornado or two. Thursday, guess what? Same areas, North Texas, Northeast Texas. With that stalled frontal boundary, we're going to have a cool front in the region, potential for some storms throughout the day into Thursday night to produce large hail, damaging winds. We'll be able to get more confident on any maximas or enhanced areas of severe weather potential once we get through today and tomorrow, since tomorrow's threat will help dictate exactly what happens on Thursday and vice versa for the following days. So the picture gets more and more muddled the farther out you get because we're having to deal with more and more storms in between. That can change things a bit. But the clear indication is we're going to have a stalled frontal boundary and multiple upper-level storm systems that will allow essentially North Texas, Northeast Texas, even back into the big country, the Contra Valley, to be focal points for thunderstorm development. Friday. Friday, the potential for... Scattered severe storms, Edwards Plateau, the Hill Country, Central Texas, North Texas, the Brazos Valley, Texoma, Northeast Texas. This may be a day where the dry line becomes a little more of a player, and this could be perhaps a busier severe weather day, depending on how things set up. Uh, definitely going to have a lot of showers and storms. It is going to be a stormy day across a good chunk of the state of Texas with the highest probability of some severe storms in the aforementioned regions. Large hail, damaging winds. We can't tell if there's going to be a tornado threat at this point, honestly, because it's just too far out and there's too much that's going to happen before then. And then Saturday, storm systems finally start to move east. But with that, the possibility of some severe thunderstorm potential continues into Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, the Arklatex, East Texas, the Piney Woods, the Golden Triangle, the Brazos Valley. And again, don't get all hyper-focused on exactly where these lines are drawn, because to be honest, they're probably going to change somewhat. Just understand, we're going to be busy the next few days with the risk, not a guarantee, of severe storms. Now, I realize, now, clearly I've had caffeine. Let's do it this way. If you're watching this video, you're already in better shape than a lot of people who may not know about the risk of active weather this week. And again, I don't want you to think I'm saying we're going to have, you know, tornadoes out the wazoo every day. I'm not. Is there the potential for some tornado threat every day? Yes. Is it a guarantee? No. Is there anything that screams, uh-oh, spaghetti or tornado outbreak in Texas right now any of those days? No. Now, could we have issues tonight? Conditionally, yes. Oklahoma and the Kansas, a higher chance of uh-oh issues in terms of the tornado potential. So 
just understand, you're already in better shape than most folks who have no idea what's going on. If you're watching this, I'm not really worried about you knowing what's going on because you're already in pretty decent shape. Just understand, I understand that a lot of folks have storm anxiety. Believe it or not, I have storm anxiety. You know, that whole me sitting in my weather office doing tornado coverage when, you know, one of those nasty storms is coming right at me, that fear of being stationary and it trying to get me. I get it. I have that anxiety. I mean, I'm still scared of lightning and thunder. Lightning is frightening. The lightning's trying to get me. Thunder. It's a childhood thing and I still have it because lightning's not really predictable. So I emphasize, I do, but understand, I'm not saying any one of these days are going to be crazy, uh-oh, spaghetti-o issues. So with that being said, let's get to the high-res rapid refresh model. This is going to be for today, tonight, into Wednesday. Now, notice this model, and this is a model that is run every hour. So it's a new run every hour. I'll tell you, this run goes out through late Wednesday. Some of the runs that have initialized since this run, about two hours ago, do have storms in Oklahoma this afternoon and evening. There is a chance we could see dry line storms late this afternoon and evening in parts of Texas as well. Her did not do well on Sunday afternoon, and it sure didn't do particularly well yesterday. So understand, this is one model that shows a possibility. It is not the end-all, right-all, whatever. It's not written in stone. Pick your favorite idiom and run with it. As we go into tomorrow, storm chances increase, northeast Texas, north Texas, and then Thursday morning through the day Thursday, you can see storms. It may not be as I almost said the Q word. It may not be as, I, I'm going to say it, it may not be as quiet as this graphic animation shows at times tonight, tomorrow, into Thursday. But that's something we'll keep an eye on. Okay, well, now if something crazy happens, we know why I said the Q word. Now, here's the wildfire look. Now, today we are going to have problems. The western third of Texas, we're going to have strong westerly winds, very low humidity, blowing dust, very high to extreme wildfire danger. Panhandle, West Texas, Permian Basin, Big Country, Northwest Texas, Concho Valley, out through the Trans-Pecos, the Davis-Guadalupe Mounds, the Borderland. Extreme wildfire danger. Could have significant issues with that. I don't want the storm threat to overshadow that because fire weather is severe weather. We just got a lot to talk about. Tomorrow into Thursday, we start to slowly calm things down. We're still going to have fire danger tomorrow. High to very high fire danger Thursday, western third of the state. That will decrease substantially going into Friday and Saturday as rain chances and maybe snow chances, yes, shift and expand west. All right, now this is going to be the long-range American weather model. As you're going to see... You know, Thursday, Friday, into Saturday, it is going to rain. Good chunk of the state is going to have rain and thunderstorm chances off and on, well, tomorrow through Saturday. You can see going into Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, Saturday, radars lit up like a Christmas tree. And not all these are going to be severe, mind you. In fact, the northwestern half of the state will be probably pretty chilly. In fact, if this is right, going into Saturday... Temperatures could be cold enough to support a changeover to snow in the Panhandle, West Texas, even Northwest Texas, if this solution is right. The European weather model is warmer, a little farther north with storm features, which would keep snow chances in Kansas, Colorado. But yeah, there is a chance we may be dealing with snow on Saturday in the Panhandle, West Texas, with rain and even storms elsewhere in the state of Texas. It is going to rain and some of y'all, it is going to rain a lot. Now, I'm not using this model to try to get specific on the exact times of when all this is going to happen, any sort of localized severe weather maxima. Look, I'll be honest with you, we just don't know that yet. Because each subsequent went round, wow, there goes the speech, WR thing, each subsequent round of storms is going to alter the setup for the next round, meaning... Even if models show something now for Thursday, I'm not confident that's exactly what's going to play out. We're just going to have to take it one at a time and keep that train rolling. But the good news is going into Sunday, things clear out. Sunday itself is looking like a pretty beautiful day across the state of Texas with sun. Same thing for Monday. Sunday, Monday onward begins an extended period of dry, 
cooler weather for the state of Texas, and that dry weather does look to persist probably into a good part of next week, so we just need to get through this week, and then we'll have some downtime. Here's forecast rain totals through Saturday. We're looking at the potential for quite a bit of rainfall across northeastern Texas, Texoma, North Texas. Three to seven inches of rain possible, the threat of flooding, especially by Friday and Saturday after soil saturate. We're getting some good rains, even out in the Panhandle, West Texas, one to two inches of rain or melted snow that would translate into rain if that happens to be a thing. Uh, the potential for one to two inches of rain. Northwest Texas, the big country, the Concho Valley, the Brazos Valley, East Texas. But the good news is, and this is good news for at least y'all down in Harlingen, the Rio Grande Valley, look, y'all are drier than a popcorn fart. Y'all need time to dry out, and you're going to get it with this. This is all going to be to your north. Big Bend, you're going to be pretty dry. Y'all probably need some rain, though, so I'm sorry. But everyone else, we should at least get some rain over the next few days. And then parts of northeast Texas, y'all are going to get too much rain. All right. Now, I'm going to go through the temperatures really quick. Uh, if you want your local temperature forecast, Download the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. You can get that down to your neighborhood if you want it. Uh, just search for Texas Storm Chasers where you download apps to your device. There you go. Shameless plug, right? All right. Today, 80s and 90s across the state. It's hot. Tomorrow, triple digits down the Rio Grande Plains, deep south Texas. Humidity values in the Rio Grande Valley are going to be ridiculous with that saturated soil. So heat index values over 105 possible. I'm sorry. Uh, 60s panhandle, everyone else 70s, 80s, 90s. Going into Thursday, you can definitely see where we're going to have that stationary cool front. And yeah, it's it's a cool front, but it's not one of those crashy the cold front, uh-oh, spaghetti-os, it's five degrees outside situations. It's April. It's kind of difficult to get that this far south now. Uh, 60s, 70s, northwestern half of the state, southeastern half of the state, we're looking at 80s, 90s. And yes, Laredo, you're probably going to be 100 because... Congratulations, you're special. Same thing on Friday. Uh, you can see cooler weather in the panhandle, though. 40s and 50s, 60s, northwestern half of the state, 80s, 90s, southeastern half. And then going into Saturday, that colder air starts filtering in. Now it's starting to get cold in the panhandle in West Texas. And again, depending on the overall temperature and solution, this may need to be dropped more, especially if we're dealing with snow chances. But cold front will continue moving southeast Saturday, Saturday night bringing an end of rain chances by Sunday and much cooler weather. So, uh, several of our team members will be chasing today, uh, probably up in Oklahoma, because that's where it looks like the storms are going to be, along with Kansas. Again, Texas, the risk is z low, but not zero. And if we do have storms develop east of that dry line, the big country, the Concho Valley, northwest Texas, north Texas, this afternoon through early this evening, they are going to pack one heck of a punch with really big hail, strong winds, and some tornado threat. Uh, but that's if storms occur at all. And right now, there's about a 15 to 30 percent chance we get a storm. Tonight, storm chances may increase a bit, especially as that cool front moves southeast. We'll be keeping you updated on that. I am going to be getting on a plane here in a couple of hours, transitioning through the megatropolis hub of DFW, then returning to my magical little office, assuming it's not taken out by a supercell. Uh, so, we're going to do our best to keep you updated. We'll have chasers out this afternoon and evening. I, knock on wood, will be in a position to provide severe weather coverage tonight, if need be. And then we're going to be set to keep you updated with multiple updates, video updates, social media posts, live coverage if necessary on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You can get your local weather forecast, interactive weather radar, daily Texas weather roundups, and more on the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Just download Texas, or search for Texas Storm Chasers where you download apps to your device. And yes, we'll be posting quite a bit here on the David Reimer Texas Weather Center YouTube channel. So make sure you've hit that subscribe button to get notified when we post new updates. If you appreciate this content, hit that thumbs up button. We do appreciate it. It makes us look special in the magical YouTube algorithm land. So stay weather aware the next few days. We'll be doing our best to keep you updated. We'll talk to you again later on today. Have a good one and God bless.